Hey, welcome to Woodworking with Wes. We're here again with Jared. Jared is going to show us a little bit about something that I'm not familiar with, but he knows a lot about, and that's milk paint. Tell us just a little bit about milk paint, and then we're going to turn it over to you and let you mix up. Well, all I know about milk paint is it's been around for thousands of years. They can uh, paint on caves with it. They, uh, the Egyptians used it, but it's a real simple uh, to make paint and it's a good quality paint. You can't buy it in the store because it goes bad within several hours But it's a good quality easy paint and it's very safe. You could paint the Children's furniture and they can chew on it all you want. It's non-toxic. It's probably the best paint uh, The least toxic paint for kids. So it's a good paint to use good quality and it's easy to paint Well, let's turn it over to you and let's make some milk paint. All right milk paint. The first step for making milk paint is milk. If you take a gallon of milk, I recommend uh, skim milk. And we'll take a gallon, we'll pour it into, I like the big bucket, but a large bowl would work, but pour the full gallon in to the bucket. Then I take a third cup of vinegar, pour the vinegar in, third cup, and stir. What the vinegar is going to do, it's going to spoil the milk. It's going to make the milk go bad or rotten. And we want the milk to curdle up. It'll kind of be a little bit smelly, but we want it to kind of get a nice, what they call, cork. And I want a small ball of cork and so I put it in the bucket I mix it it kind of bubbles up with the vinegar uh, we'll set aside forget about it for overnight and then tomorrow I'll rinse out I got to get rid of the vinegar I got to rinse the vinegar out we'll have the cork and we'll see what happens tomorrow now what I have is the cork in here and I have the clear mixture in here so I'm going to take it and let's go over to the sink pour all this liquid out And then I want to rinse this because I want to get the vinegar out of the milk. It's like say cheesecloth would probably work a little better, but I'm getting it. It's just a little slower. The holes are are uh, coarse, and where it's the paint strainer, the holes are a little more fine. So what I have in here is cork, and I say I'm squeezing all the extra juice out of it. I, I rinsed it to get rid of all that vinegar. And I have a nice little ball of cork. Okay, now I'm gonna rinse the bucket. We have all this, uh, it's kind of like a cheesy, I'll put that in. And then I will add about a half cup of lime, regular garden lime. Okay, I have a little bit of lime, and I'll just put a little bit in here, and how much you put depends on the texture and, and how chalky you want. If you want it a, kind of like a chalk paint, you can add a little more lime. If you want it a little smoother, you can add a little less lime. And what exactly does the lime do, Jared? Lime gives it the, 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 a little bit of texture. Okay, and you say just garden lime, just like you would buy at the garden store? Buy at the garden store. Okay. Go in your garage and get one or borrow something for your neighbor. <laughs> That's just need a little bit. Okay, now it's looking a little dry to me. That doesn't look like paint. It's getting there. Okay, all right. Uh, if out. I need to, I can add a little bit of water. getting there and then I'm going to add some color I want to make uh, there's just a little bit here I want two colors I want orange and black They're kind of an old-fashioned red and a black it's getting a little thick I'm gonna add just a little bit of water not much and thin it up Now 
and I want to add some color to it. Now you said add some color. What are you using for your color? Is it just a pigment base that you're using or is it a special dye or something that you're using for your color? Um, you can get a color all or all tints. It's a paint tint. You can even go to Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards and bring a cup and ask for uh, some of their tint oh, okay. to make a color. So that's all it is. It's just this color tint from their machines. Oh, okay. All right. So just like they would tint a gallon of paint for you at, to, for a custom color, you're just using that same kind of tint? Yes, I am. Okay. All right. Very good. So let me review a little bit. We're starting off. We started off with a gallon of milk and a three-quarters cup of vinegar. We let it sit overnight. We cleaned and, and washed off the mixture, the cottage cheese mixture, you called it. And now we've added a little bit of water and some lime, and that's where we are right now. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to add in the paint colors, uh, the paint color. I'm going to do, uh, I want a little bit of red. There's some old-fashioned red. That's a very thick-looking paint. Yeah. <laughs> that's that little... And you just mix the tint as to what color you desire. Is that yep. correct? There's no no formula. Oh, there you go. I want it. I want it kind of rich. Yeah. It's a little too much. Put a little too much in there. I'm gonna add a little more. There you go. So you can see it doesn't make much. A full gallon of milk doesn't make a whole lot of paint. Yeah. But when you're looking at uh, fifty, sixty dollars a gallon for your paint, or twenty dollars a gallon, uh, twenty dollars for a quart of paint, a three dollar gallon of milk is a whole lot cheaper. Yeah. But the paint and the paint is even is, is usually a little better. It's a little bit thick. I let it curdle up just a little too too and much. And water and water is your thinning agent. Water, yes. Okay. All right. And it's, you can see how thick it was. It just takes a lot of a stirring. And it's just going to be... I'm just mixing it up and stirring it. There we go. Now let's make some black. In it just a little bit. Oops, put too much in. I can see this is the mad scientist paint. Yeah, it's a fun paint. It's actually it's a really good paint. It paints really nice and it holds up really well. It's just a good good paint. Alright. Would you say that the reason that you don't have milk paint around a lot anymore is the fact that it only lasts so long, so it's kind of the mix-yourself type of thing, and, and because of that... We um, don't make things ourselves anymore, yes. Retail people don't... And you can't, this is not, you can't sell this retail, it's only good for a couple hours. Now what you can do is you use it, and you might get the next day if you close it tightly and put it in the refrigerator... Uh, you may get one extra day out of it, but usually not. And then you got to mix it up, and the color's not always exact unless you measure out the exact amount. I see. I see. Um, and even then, the color doesn't match. So if you're doing small projects, milk paint is really good, and it's a good quality paint. All right, let's paint with it. Wes was kind enough to bring me a table of sorts, um, and we'll paint this. But it's a little dirty we roughed it up with sandpaper just a bit but let me clean it off as i would regular painting with the lacquer thinner i like to use lacquer thinner a lot because it's such a good cleaner and it softens the paint and gets all the dirt off really easy and then it'll help make sure the paint ensure that the paint sticks to the uh, medium the table Especially there's some oil, see there's some oil based paint at the bottom, that'll peel right off normally. Let's just wipe this really good. 
clean off. I got some dirt down here. I'll clean this off really good. I guess I should have wiped it down before I started this video, but here we go. That's great. We know we always have to clean things before we paint them, so it's good for everybody to see how we do that. I got some dirt. I don't like painting on top of dirt. Sure, it makes a texture, but sometimes it just doesn't adhere very well. But I'm getting the most of the rough stuff off, and here we go. Let's see how this works. I need to strain it one more time. It's a little bit chunky. I should have I should have strained it one more time, but it'll still work. Now, if it is a little bit chunky like that, um, when you said it'll still work, do you have to go back and sand it after it dries? No, I'll get the chunks. I'll get the chunks out. Okay, so you just take care of that while you're painting then. Yeah. How it was a little I don't like the little chunks on here. So I'm gonna strain this one more time. And get the wipe the chunks off. I don't want chunks on my table and we'll start over much better a few chunks but I can touch that off from my brush I didn't get my brush cleaned off and like I said you don't want to try to get it in one coat always plan on two coats otherwise you'll get things to run and I paint in different directions and I just slop it on you know just in different directions when I paint just to get it in all the nooks and crannies. And then when I get it the way I like it, then I do a final brush stroke. And I try to go with the grain of the wood. It doesn't have to be straight as long as it's in the grain of the wood. Now if you're going to an edge where one wood turns into another piece of wood, you want that exact and, and straight. We're gonna make this two colors. We're gonna go orange and, and black. Now, how long does it usually take for milk paint to dry? Just like any regular latex paints, a few hours. Oh, okay. So there's no special drying time, just same as other stuff. Same as the others, yep. Okay. I wanna just go over one more time, just make my strokes line. It's, it's still wet enough. And it's a little see-through because the second coat would be nice and solid. So we're going to wait, let it dry, put the second coat on. Now I'm going to do the same with my black. It may be okay. I don't know if I need to strain it. We'll try it. I like using a sash brush so I can get in the corner. I don't like big brushes because it holds a lot of paint, goes a lot faster. And I can make a smoother, finer finish with a larger brush than I can with a small brush. Sometimes you have to go with the larger brush. Okay, now I'm painting this and it's a little bit thin. It's not as good as I wanted. So I'm gonna add a little more color tint and stir it up some more. I want it a little richer. Jared, so that our customers, our viewers can see a little better, I'm going to have you come around to this side of the paint, or this type of side of the table, and have you paint with us looking over your shoulder so we can see your actual paint going on. I think our viewers would like that much better. Just a little too. I'm going to thicken it up just a bit. You know, fun thing with painting is I could do something fun like that. I kind of like that. So if I'm doing a painting something whimsical, I can make a mistake and think, oh, I like that. I'll go with that. <laughs> uh, rule number three, I can always change my mind. We'll talk about those rules later, Wes. All right. I got a little slop on the top, but I'm not worried about it. This is just the first coat. And see, when I paint, I, I don't want to go like this and down. And... And see I have a, how it has a hard stop. Mm -hmm. I want to go straight across on the final stroke, all the way across. And then right here, I'm going to go straight down just so slightly, as long as that line is correct. 
and and I paint. There's a little white spot here because I, I go in one way. I've got to go back in the other way. And if it doesn't get it, I jab it. And then when I'm finished, when it's on the way on, I do a, a stroke. Uh, uh, brush it in the same in the direction I want the want the brush stroke to go. You'll always. Some people ask me, how do I get rid of the brush strokes? And my answer is, you don't. And you don't want to. If the brush strokes in the right place, it can add value and texture and make it look good. If you want a glass like finish, then it needs to be sprayed. But so, most times, you can use a brush and make a really nice finish using the brush strokes. And you could, there's techniques of minimizing the brush strokes. Sometimes you don't want them to stand out. You want them to be very subtle. In some cases, you won't even see it with the natural eye as well as you feel it. And what I mean by that is uh, sometimes you don't notice if something looks good, you re something makes you feel good and you don't know why, because it's in order, it's prop, it's done. Like I said, I'm not too worried because this is just the first coat. I really enjoy painting. Painting is so much fun. I mean, sometimes I painting all these years, and when I've done work, it's all prepped. I'm ready to paint. I get a real giddy. Ooh, I get to start painting today. <laughs> I feel like I'm in kindergarten. I get to have fun, play with the paints, and create and have fun. I know the feeling. I don't know why people hate painting so much. They probably don't have the right tools or the know-how. Well, that's what we're visiting with you today. So, but just a couple of simple techniques can make painting. A whole lot of fun and painting should be fun in fact we'll talk about it later my rules that's rule number one painting has to be fun you have to have fun or uh, the paint won't turn out very good if you're not having fun then hire it out get someone else to paint it if you're not having fun you're not doing it right well, you sure made this look easy oh I hope so I hope I made it look fun yeah And see, I'm not, I'm not perfect. I just slop in different directions, and it's a little see-through, but that's okay. That's the first coat. Never try to get anything on one coat. Always plan on two coats. The second coat makes all the difference. And then I can look around and say, I missed a spot. I usually do. I don't know, we as painters hear that all the time. You miss this part. <laughs> I'm joking, but I, I, I don't mind when someone points out places I miss because that just saves me from uh, going back and touching it up later. Runs. I hate runs. Runs and dust. That'll ruin a nice paint job. And so after I do it, I'm, I'm going back over the runs and just checking because I will have runs. And you'll have missed spots. And sometimes you see old paint booger. Sometimes it's from dust. And it, sometimes it's from the... And there we have coat number one. Very good. Now you say that we can let this dry for several hours and still use the paint that we've mixed up and give it a second coat. That's correct. Very good. Well, I would let's... cover it off. I would wrap it up, seal it. I'll put a Walmart baggie over it and we'll put it in the refrigerator and we'll... Put another, we'll try it later. Okay, sounds great. Hey, welcome back to day two with our little table that we're doing with milk paint. Jared is showing us how. We've put the milk paint in the refrigerator overnight because like Jared said, it doesn't last very long. A day or two is about all you get. He had to actually strain it a little bit this morning to get some of the more coagulation out of it. But he's going to show us what he's going to do to finish off our table. I'm gonna get out of his way. Let's watch. Hey, thank you, Wes. The red tint didn't coagulate as bad. It was a little thick, so I added a little water, just a little water, stirred, and it was fine. The black paint, for some reason, the lamp black, it caused it to, it got, it got really, really thick. So I had to add a little water, mix it really good, and then strain it one more time. And I sanded the, uh, just some dust and imperfection, just kind of, sanded the table but I don't sand very hard just really lightly as if I'm washing washing it if I sand too much you'll sand some of the paint off you don't want to do that you want to be careful not to sand the corners 
which you'll sand the edge. Just hold your uh, sandpaper at an angle and make sure you don't hit the corners. Otherwise, you'll remove too much paint off. And then as you touch it, you can feel it and see if there's any places. Whoops, there's a little bit right here. I can feel the bumps. And it feels nice and soft, and then I'm ready to paint. Um, I'll start with the red paint. Shut it up, and we'll put the second coat on. There's some fun things we could do. If I wanted to, I could put uh, masking tape, and I could tape, squ tape uh, squares or triangles or diamonds and have a black and white table. But today we're just uh, keeping it real simple. There's all kinds of colors we can add, and like I said, the colors... The color tints react a little bit differently with the paint. And they have a little different characteristics. They may last longer than other colors. Um, let me turn around and you can watch as if I'm painting over my shoulder. That way you won't have to look at my ugly mug for so long. So when I brush, put the paint on, I do it in all kinds of directions. And sometimes I dab it if I have to. But then when I get the paint on as evenly as I want, then I will do one final brush stroke. And that will give a nice finish. If I start in the middle or go, it, you, you, the brush strokes are more obvious. I want, I want very subtle. I want to see the brush strokes, but I want them very subtle. If I make a mistake in the middle, I, it's like a plane. You'll soft landing and a gentle takeoff. If you start too hard and, and pick up too hard, you'll see the mark. So it's a soft landing and a soft takeoff. Um, I want to paint a little bit of the corners. It's the hardest part you, to get the right amount of paint on. Now what I'll do is uh, let's paint the black. Look there's a little drip there. I always hate those. Always while you're checking watch out for the drips and runs. Sometimes it's best just to finger. Take it with a finger. Now Jared just to ask a question here. When you do milk paint a lot of our uh, viewers have asked on different things that we've done. If they need to put a top coat or a, or a a clear sealer coat of some sort over the top of it. Milk paint doesn't require that, does it? No, it does. You can if you want. If it's going to be touched a lot, you can put a clear lacquer or a, a spray out of a, a nine dollar spray can. Oh, so it will. It it is okay. It will. It is okay to put it on there, but you don't need to. This oh, is a, this is a good paint finish. Okay, very good. Thank you. You can see some runs. I'm going to fix that with my brush. And parts parts that I missed, I didn't see from this side. Let's get in there. Get in there. I paint in every direction. I be careful that you don't have anything next to you. You might flick some paint on there. And then once I get it the way I want, brush across. And this is this where the boards meet, that's the line I want straight. The rest doesn't quite matter. Ed told us at the beginning that a gallon of milk gives you about a quart of paint. Now we did one gallon of milk and you made two different colors and you're going to have plenty of paint for a little stool this size. So a gallon of milk did just fine for a project this size and had plenty of paint. You probably could have got away with a quart of milk. <laughs> uh, you can paint a dresser drawer or a little bed set. You can get a long ways with a gallon. Whatever you don't use gets thrown away. But if you don't have enough, then the colors, unless you have the colors Matched exact, the colors usually don't come out. You'll... So it's better to have too much than not enough. Yeah. Okay, well that's always a good thing to know is... is... And your biggest expense is the milk. Well, being as milk is relatively inexpensive compared to a retail gallon of paint, we'll go with the whole gallon of milk. Absolutely. This is turning into quite a cute little table. This, remember, this was just a kind of a garage sale type table. It was pretty ugly. Paint was peeling on the top. And we've turned it into a real nice little table with just a gallon of milk. Pretty cool. And a little color tint and yeah, vinegar. Well. And uh, that's about it. Now I'm going to go ahead and look and look for some drips and runs. And I just may, if, if it, while it's still wet enough I can touch it up with a brush if it's a little bit dry sometimes I'll touch it up with my finger I missed the spot right there you know probably this table might require if I wanted to really heavy I might do three coats on it now is there a limit to how many coats of milk point paint you should put on a project or just, just like regular paint many as it's, it requires it's similar as, as regular paint as many requires 
you know, uh, uh, it's a little thinner than regular paint. So two coats is a minimum, three coats if you really want, if it's gonna get a lot of use. Um, sometimes with antique furniture, um, I'll take this color orange and I'll put it on like an old table or old chair or table and, and then I'll, I'll put a coat on, I'll sand it down so you can see some of the wood. I'll put another coat on, I'll sand it and distress it a little bit and then I'll put two coats of black on top of that, sanding it down so I can see some of the wood where the, if it's a chair where the back and tail sit on the chair, I'll rub it to clear down to you'll see some wood. You'll see some orange, you'll see some black, and that gives a oh wow, a an real antique, antique look. Antique yeah, look. yeah. Speaking of antique furniture, anybody who knows anything about shaker furniture, when I was studying up a little bit on shaker furniture, the shakers used milk paint. So this has been around a long, long time. Like you said, way, way Thousands back. Years. Yeah, Thousands. but uh, in our American history, the shakers use milk paint. Well, this has been such a good video, and Jared, thank you so much for showing us how. And we're going to find out some more things that Jared knows next time on Woodworking with Wes.